everybody, Pop Gord here, and welcome to me trying something different. If you managed to catch my live stream or part of one of the two live streams, I think it was the second one after the first one crapped out. Anyways, I had talked about and shown off some pieces that I had recently just picked up. Honestly, it was like just a day ago from my childhood, uh, from a movie that really hasn't aged all that well over time. And I remember I was mesmerized by it. I would have been nine years old back in 1982 when the movie Megaforce came out. Now, honestly, there's gonna be a lot of you out there, if you do watch this video, you're gonna be like, Megaforce, like the Power Rangers? No. No, not 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 at all. This 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 one this one this it's it was uh, yeah. It hasn't gotten easier to watch over the years because, like a lot of films from the early '80s, late '70s, what have you, technology has advanced so far from then to what we have today. So that being said, green screen technology back in the early '80s was. That was cutting edge, but to watch it now, you're like, wow, I could probably film that better myself with my iPhone than what was out there. But anyways, uh, yeah, so Hot Wheels, as far as I could tell, they were the only ones to ever put any toys out for this movie. And there was only, I wanna say six vehicles total. Now, as a kid myself, I had, Four? I had four out of the six. So the first one I had was the, um, I just always called it the dune buggy. Now again, Hot Wheels has reused this mold I, uh, uh, countless times. So the last time I saw it was like bright yellow. I don't think it had as many of the guns on the sides, but, um, but you've got the three rockets on the top. You've got the laser cannon, which, which can twist and tuck back in to the back here. Uh, and then of course you've got <laughs> a couple of different types of machine guns. And the color scheme, from what they said in the film, was to help blend in for when it was in desert conditions because this apparently will camouflage you in the desert. So, during the movie, they started their mission at night. So they had this thing but this is the stealth version. So basically it's the exact same car in black. Now there is a, a quick scene in the film that they show, uh, they put like a hat on the front end of the car, it sits there for like a couple seconds, they take it off and then it's got a big black spot like this. So it just shows you the, the camouflage technology that they have established all these years ago. So I've got uh, these two. When I was a kid, I had a few of these and I had um, TACCOM. So this is kind of like their futuristic tank that looks after sending all the coordinates and can check the, the, the life systems for all the guys driving uh, the dune buggies. And there's also motorcycles. Now, I will show some pictures throughout this whole yarn that I'm spinning, but the motorcycle never made it into production. Now there are a few sample pieces out there and they're like the grail of grails. Uh, they also did uh, just a regular military tank because that's what they went up against. And then there was a red and white Ford Bronco um, that was used in about a two minute scene. And that was it. So that would make up technically the six. So five, five of them actually made it into production. I had Four. The only one I never, I never had was the was the stealth version, and I still, I still love the film. It's again, like I said, it hasn't aged very well. It stars Barry Bostwick from the Rocky Horror Picture Show or Spin City with Michael J. Fox, that TV series. I think Barry Bostwick's awesome. We've also got Michael Beck, and he was in The Warriors and Xanadu, so that's something. Uh, let's see, the, the, the female lead was, um, I wanna see if hopefully I get the name right, Persis Kambata. So she was the bald girl 
in Star Trek The Motion Picture, like V'ger. So that, that was her. Now, I know from what I've heard, either she was in a car accident or something where she got really sick, and she passed away at a pretty young age, so um, didn't really have a huge uh, movie career, unfortunately. Also, Edward Mulher, who was Devin on Knight Rider, the TV series. Henry Silva, and he's been in a bunch of stuff. I think he normally, again, plays bad guys a lot. But the one movie I do remember him from was Amazon Women on the Moon. And it's just kind of a parody of a whole bunch. It's like sitting there and changing the, the, the TV channels. So that's what happens throughout the movie is you're trying to watch Amazon Women on the Moon, but then it keeps cutting to all these commercials. And he had a, a small segment called uh, BS or Not. And it just kept showing up throughout the film. So I, that's where I remember him. Um, also, Evan Kim, who played Tony in uh, V the miniseries. So he was Mike Donovan's uh, like Korean or Asian um, partner until he wasn't alive anymore. Uh, there are a few other people in there you may recognize from other things like early soap operas from like the 80s or whatnot. Um, uh, just the rest of the names just don't aren't sticking in my brain right now. But uh, I just recently bought the film uh, digitally because it is hard to come across a legit copy on Blu-ray and DVD. Now, as far as I've heard, there are copies that are out there for sure now. I still have the VHS copy from Jumbo Video way back in the day. The store was closing down. I was in there. They had it for 50 cents. It was like a, a slide out drawer, it was like an old school looking one. It's somewhere, but I don't have a VCR to watch it. So hopefully you'll get a kick out of some of the pictures. Really, honestly, it's, it is worth a watch just for the laugh. Honestly, the, towards the end of the film, I don't want to spoil it, but that's kind of my favorite scene is when they're kind of finishing up the mission, so to speak. Basically, they were getting hired by um, De the De Devin from Knight Rider, whatever. So he came in and said, listen, there's this military coup going on. We can't involve real military. We need an undercover ops team to kind of go in and take care of things or else it'll be a, a, a war and the whole bit. So they agree and their mega force, their team from all over the world. Uh, as you can see, a lot of them have their, uh, their flag of country on their shoulders, uh, that type of thing. And so they go and do it. And then they get halfway through the mission and the main bad guy, Henry Silva and Ace, they're, they're buddies. They had served together years ago. Uh, so he came to talk to him and then the Devon guy came and talked to him and just was like, listen, uh, if you come across the border, it'll be an act of war. So I guess the mission's kind of done. It was really weird. There wasn't really a major story going on. It was just a lot of, hey, look at the neat things that we can do with, with dune buggies and, and whatnot. And you can see some of the dune buggies have like this extra wheel underneath that pushes up to be able to make them spin back really quick. So this comes from the genius of stuntman slash director Hal Needham, who actually does play a small role as uh, the guy in the back here, uh, the TATCOM guy who helps, uh, you know, mess around with some of the bad guys. Now, from what I heard too, when they were filming the, fil the movie, um, he had a pretty bad accident. He was trying out one of the motorcycles. He wiped out, broke a bunch of ribs and what have you. So he wasn't in the best of shape. But yeah, filmed in Nevada, uh, filmed in, no in Nevada. And they, for one of the first films to try intro vision, which was like pictures that you, the actors could walk out of or back into was supposed to save all this money and it was just the new revolutionary thing so they didn't have to have huge sets it could be more of a painting don't think that would have flown now I, like you see what they do on the mandalorian for god's sake so uh yeah it makes this other stuff look so cookie cutter uh from else what i read it was a 20 million dollar film back in 1982 that made just over five um just over five million dollars total um complete flop it was considered uh, if it did well it was going to have a sequel called deeds not words which is one of the taglines on the movie poster but yeah that was it it, it basically died 
Now, again, being a nine-year-old in the whole in the city, the town that I grew up in, we actually had a movie theater, and they would always do a uh, double feature every Saturday and Sunday. And I remember watching Megaforce on the big screen a lot, like a couple of times a day, or go on a Saturday, go on a Sunday, and was easily just transfixed into going, "Wow, this is really neat, Megaforce!" But yeah, it's like I said, it, it's super campy, super cheesy, super worth the watch. I am ecstatic that I was able to find a local deal. These were all from the original owner. He just had them in a box and I got them. I got them for a great price. So I've got three out of the five. I am going to try to track down just one of the military tanks. I think that'll be the easiest one. I think the, the Ford Bronco is, is a little cha-ching. And I don't even bother trying to find that concept bike. I'd love to get that bike, but uh, it's if I do see one, I know they've sold for easily a couple hundred dollars for a little Hot Wheels. That's, uh, that's a little much for myself. But anyways, guys, so that was kind of my quick synopsis, my rundown for the movie Megaforce. Oh, here we go. This is how we can tie this into action figures. So if you see the movie, you'll see some of the pictures, the, the nice skin tight gold or silver jumpsuits that all the Megaforce team are wearing. Those were designed by Mattel. They didn't have anybody doing wardrobes or costumes or whatever. So Mattel, the toy company, they were credited with the uh, with the with with the onesies that all the heroes were. So there you go. Just a little bit of a nugget, guys. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many of these I'll do, but I really want to get uh, get these documented that I finally finally found them and got some great conditioned vehicles. And yeah, just want to show them off a little closer. So I'll take a few more pictures of that. I'll put some other pictures up. Make sure you smash that like button, comment, share, like, subscribe, all that usual YouTube mumbo jumbo. And we'll see what comes down the pipeline next. Later, eh?